So at this point, it has been almost six years since the whole influencer boxing thing was really at its inception, with Logan Paul fighting KSI and his little brother Jake beating up on Deji. Since then, most of these guys have done these boxing events as more of a side gig, where they really lock in for a couple of months in anticipation of the event, but for the most part are still mainly focused on their brand or their business, or really being more of an influencer. But a couple of these YouTubers have leaned all the way into the boxing lifestyle, like this dude Salt Poppy, Gib, and most infamously, Jake Paul. And all I wanted to do was give y'all a knockout for Christmas. And for a while, it was great to see him bounce these dudes off the canvas. But after the Tommy Fury fight, the excitement just has not been there, as Jake had now been defeated and his haters had their quench for his failure met. Since then, he has beat up on and knocked people out, but there was really no buzz behind those events. Most recently, he fought this last weekend, and no one cared or really even knew what was going on in the first place. In his defense, he was the co-main event here, at least he was supposed to be. His friend Amanda Serrano was supposed to be the real main event, seeing that she is from Puerto Rico herself, where the entire thing went down, but she had some sort of issue with her eye at the very last second and had to scratch herself out. So in turn, Jake became the real main event, and in the end, he got the TKO against this dude who looked like he could be your accountant. In all reality, he was a good boxer back in the day. His name is Ryan Borland, and he used to be a gold glove winner. But he's now 35, and has only fought once in the last six years, apparently completely changing his occupation during that time span. Now, before the fight, they had apparently ran this little news story on Ryan Borland. Borland is originally from the Bay Area of California, but decided to come out to North Dakota five years ago to work in the oil industry. I'm happy to get in. I'm taking it really, really serious. It's never really a boring fight when I fight. Um, I'm always in shape and I'm always ready to fight. Now, obviously, people are not exactly impressed with this training footage. I mean, I'm not saying he was like neon on the pads, but it's pretty clear this man is far past his prime. So, of course, a lot of people came in saying, well, when is Jake going to fight a real boxer? But you did have some people defending him like this man who says, I don't like Jake Paul at all, but the level of competition he's fighting is normal for 90% of boxers starting out. Y'all know this, but just hate him so much to admit it. And even in watching the pre-promotion for this fight, looking back, you can see why it pretty much had no hype and why no one knew about this because none of these clips went viral at all. Jake brought back the whole gotcha hat bit that he had done to Floyd Mayweather. No love lost here between these two. Cruiserweight fight. Once again, Jake Paul has someone's hat. Y'all know how I feel about hat thievery, taking someone's hat off their head. I just find it to be very disrespectful. You don't touch another man's hat. He even tried to troll him in his name before the event. I have a question. Like, what is the rhino? Like, how did you come up with that nickname? My grandpa gave it to me when I was younger. Awkward. I mean, you bring out the grandpa story and it's really all over. Like, someone's looking to make fun of you about something and they end up just looking like a serious asshole. Are you vegan like rhinos? No, I was uh, pretty tough and strong as a kid, so my grandpa gave it to me. That's what's up, bro. Congrats. Fire nickname. Do you realize that rhinos are land animals? So yes, the promotional material for this fight was like putting some completely mild salsa on some chips. Just get that shit out of here. It ain't spicy enough. Still, Jake tried to get the crowd hyped. Fuck the rhino. I'm getting tired of these dumbass rhinos walking around this motherfucker. Island. Tomorrow, the rhinos are going extinct. I mean, Jake Paul might be the first influencer to get CTE. And like I said, this thing was over before it started. The entire fight would last around two and a half minutes, with Jake getting the win at the end of the first round. Like, it might have looked like he dominated him on paper because the guy wasn't really punching back, but he was pretty much an immobile target, and Jake was still missing a lot of his punches. Here's an alternate angle of the end of this fight.
I mean, honestly, the Rhino really had no business going into there in the first place. But shout out to him, man. He went in there, he took the beat down, and he collected what was very likely a very nice check. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't trust this dude in like a bar fight, but if you show up to fight someone who has been training for the last six years, who is 10 years younger than you, you're probably gonna get the beats. Some people commented how in the post-fight interview, Jake sounded pretty f up yeah man you know i just uh like to meditate and breathe realistically nothing can stop me here not even not even a rhino i mean he looks like he's about ready to give that man ariel a smooch on the lips and honestly if anyone truly has cte here it might be this guy ryan I'll be rooting for you the rest Thank of your career, you, bro. Man. I really appreciate that. Yeah. We'll be rooting for you too, bro. Yeah. Hey, we'll bring, Congrats, man. bring you in for training for his next fight, huh? Hey, sounds <laughs> good. Sounds good. Appreciate good job, you, my man. man. Yeah. And shout out to this man, Ryan, bro. He really does seem like a good guy. Of course, Dylan Dan has had to step in to try and give his two cents. He says there's someone in Puerto Rico right now wondering why their Uber driver is taking so long. And to me, it's just like, dude, Dylan, at this point, just get the f off the internet he keeps trying to come back okay it's like his pass has been revoked he can't get in he had his chance at redemption he had his chance to go on and continue fighting and be taken seriously as a competitor and he completely blew it this guy made a complete ass of himself so to me it's like dylan no one wants to hear from you bro i'm glad that dana white isn't giving you the time of day he's gatekeeping you from the ufc and i find that hilarious and for the most part people were unimpressed by this win jake paul was always destined to win this fight and you are the suckers if you paid for this fight and i know most people didn't he is disrespecting the sport of boxing he's disrespecting all the people that were at the whale but more importantly he's conning the fans and here's where things start to go a bit off the rails you have ryan garcia who has already been spiraling for the greater part of the last year ever since he lost to tank davis a lot of people suspect that this man is now using if you know what i mean and i'm not talking about steroids He's on that Oscar De La Hoya treatment, and he's trying to start beef with Jake now. He says, I can't take this shit no more. And then he even left him like a little voicemail. I can't, I can't do this shit. I feel so f***ing bad for introducing Jake Paul to boxing. I f***ed up. I can't let, allow this to happen. I can't, I can't. He's disrespecting my sport. He's disrespecting everything. I just, I don't know. Call my team, Jake. And a lot of people were surprised to hear this statement coming from him. I mean, the guy has been posting some pretty deranged shit onto social media the last couple of months. Like, I'm pretty sure he got divorced one day after his wife gave birth. But regardless, him and Jake used to be really buddy-buddy. And now he's putting this message out to the world like, yeah, f*** you. And this was Jake's response to that voice memo. He's doing it off some cocaina. <laughs> <laughs> that boy is getting that shit straight from Colombia or something. Ryan, I love you. You know that, bro, but you got to chill out, bro, because like there's a line and people you, you just seem like you're losing your mind and acting thirsty and desperate and saying you're a billionaire when you had one money fight. If you do want to fight, that's to me light work. You got no footwork. And as long as you've been in the game, I'm a better boxer than you. Now, I will say that would probably be one fight that would actually draw a lot of interest if Jake Paul could actually fight Ryan Garcia. That would be something that a lot of people would tune into. And apparently they even FaceTime during this post-fight press conference. What's up? What you got to say? Fuck you. you, bitch. I'll beat your ass. You know that. It's already being recorded, bro. You know how we do it. You lightweight. You lightweight. You're, I thought you had baby mamas to suck your dick. I thought you had all those baby mamas to suck your dick. You little, bro. You got no balls. No balls. No balls. I'm going to put you back on the canvas like Tank did. I wouldn't be surprised if you put your balls on the internet right now, brother. You're losing it. Bro, <laughs> he hung up. I mean, hey guys, when Jake Paul, of all people, is out here cooking you, 
you must be in a pretty bad place in life. I mean, in general, Ryan Garcia really does need to chill out. I'm thinking about making a video on him and all of his very strange social media postings and interviews he's done recently in the next couple of days. So y'all let me know if y'all are interested in that. But it does seem like the dude could be on the verge of pulling a Oscar De La Hoya only with like a very small amount of the success that Oscar ever had. And of course, you have people out there who think this has all just been building for a very long time as old clips like this have resurfaced and people have suspected that the two men are just basically in on it together sign the contract Bro. No, no, sign the contract. Oscar's your daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oscar's your I'm daddy. Your daddy. I'm yeah, your daddy. Oscar's your daddy. And I'm your daddy. Yeah, talk to Oscar, it's bro. I'm your daddy. Either way, the point of this video is that the whole influencer boxing scene to me is basically dying down by the day. I mean, there is some fights out there with some juice left in them, like if he was to fight KSI, or if he was to fight Ryan Garcia, or probably several other guys, he could probably get those pay-per-view buys back up. But until he once again fights someone where there's actually a chance where he might get knocked out, I don't think very many people are going to care. Y'all let me know what you guys think about this whole situation down below. As always, I do want to thank you guys for watching today's video, dropping a like and subscribing, but as you guys know, it's been your boy, Tan Superman and some other obscure shit out he needs to be covered, so I'm out. Peace.